For it is the price of the redemption of Israel, and for that we do break our Abba for this Shabbat, the Shabbaton. We may come into his presence and rejoice in the delightfulness of his Torah. That our hearts may sing with great gladness the shiram, the psalms of his testimony. And that's what every shiram, every song that comes out of the bosom of Yisrael, it should be about that. We greet you, our friends, our listeners, you that critique and criticize i have no compunction with that at all with the same judgment you meet out to me you better be able to assess yourself to the same degree that your heart may be purged from your corruption and all of your sins i don't shrink because of judgment of one assessing me one disagreeing with me it doesn't cause me to seek out some other alternative vindictive approach to assert my ability. I know who I am. I know my identity. I know my calling. I know my purpose in life. And so everything else is mute. By the way, my friend, yes, we sing the same songs today. We're not going to stop singing the same songs because the more I sing them, the more real they come and become a part of my innate response unto Yah. So I don't need any kind of prodding for that innate spring of life to rise up. And the person that was critiquing and critical about us singing the same songs over and over, uh, I don't think we've received any email or letter with wordings and notes of a song that this individual declares that they can sing, but uh, they will not excuse themselves for drinking the same whiskey and wine and the same brand every day. This individual cannot see that they smoke the same damn cigarettes every day. That's a filthy spirit. And by the way, the individual sent an offering and I refund the offering back. I don't want their funds, you understand? Because I know that that is hanif. That's hypocrisy to the tilt. You will not critique me or us here. When your life is not worth a damn, I will not allow you to do that. And I will not receive the damnable blood offering, the sin offering, not me. You can give it to someone else. I have no compunction with that. And you do not have to get my approval on those matters uh, because you still are a drunkard and a filthy cigarette-sucking beast. It's a vile thing. How can that demon of Nicodemus, Nicodem, inhabit the same dwelling uh, where about the Ruach of Yah? And you're not drinking the Yayin, the fresh breath of the living wine of Torah. You're drinking the God rot stench out of hell, this gut rock, whiskey and wine. And your Miller lights too. How about that? I don't have to think what I have to say. I didn't have to prepare this statement. It simply flows from me. The hypocrisy of this damnable generation. Stop your smoking and drinking. Shut your damn mouth as a woman. Learn how to be quiet and submit yourself. And that's what you do. I'm hoping she's there to hear. Now, don't write me a silly email. Hallelujah. 
I rejoice this Shabbat Israel. I rejoice greatly for the abundance of God's riches. These super emotional men that call that call themselves leaders of Israel. They are so afraid to speak truth to people, thinking that they will offend them, so they spun code, code it. Well, it's all right, don't let nobody work. No, I rebuke this Jezebel spirit. Yeah. If it's one thing that Evangelist Hartfield taught me as a young 23-year-old young man, 24, he looks at me one day and he laughs at me and he says, young man, open rebuke. It's better than secret love. <laughs> How about that? This is a cowardice generation. The men are weak as uh, Akshimri said water. Weakest water. They're the Ruban. They're waterly weak. They have no strength. Here's one thing about the Kohahim or the Kohan. We may think that they were some little docile little men, but you read the book of Maccabees. They were some hellacious geba. They were warriors. And they defend the throne of Yah. They defend the Torah and they defended the Torah of Yah. We got a generation of men of weak as water. They're tossed by every simplicity of ignorance of what they believe is doctrine. They're easily carried away. The strength of any strong man that he judge everything. And he's not offended at being judged. Because it makes him strong. He doesn't mind being critiqued and criticized. He doesn't mind his weakness exposed. You wonder why the Isha are weak because hell, where are the men? I shall declare his Torah. We want to greet you all that have joined us on the live audio or the live visual stream. You say, Yabrach, Yeshua HaMashiach, the riches is Isha, his shalom of great happiness rests upon you. That your resolutes, you are strong in your passion, your desire to please him above all things, and you press toward daily the mark and the high calling of Almighty Yah and Yeshua HaMashiach. So we greet you, our friends, you are special friends, and all of you all are special friends, even my enemies are special to me because I need you all. I need you. Yah needs Hashatan. He needs him. He needs the devil. He needs him. So I need my enemies. You, you don't have any enemies. You better look to yourself and say, oh, something is wrong with me. You are an appeaser to every man. I would not trust you as far as I can see you. You look at every man to speak well of you and you got this false pretense. I don't want to be around a, a superficial, indignant beast out of hell. You'll be around a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we greet you all in your sure smarty name. May the strength of his Torah rest upon you and all those that are gathered with you. We greet you our Ach Kevin Wines, the uh, uh, precious Ach. We greet you in your sure smarty name and all with you our Ach Kessner there in Tampa, Florida with all those that are with you, our precious friend Kofi there in California, your wife, your children, those that are gathered with you. We greet you all in Yeshua's mighty name. We greet, greet you, our Ak Keith. We hope that you have parked that big truck and you're in some rest stop. You have found some way to get online to visit with us on this Shabbat. So we greet you, our precious brother. May your strength rest upon you. We greet you, our Ak Ben Yisraya. They are in Bath, South Carolina, and all of our precious friends, you that support this labor of great love. It's not a labor here that is facetious and false. I'm not a false man. You can call me anything, but that you will not get by. I'm not a liar. 
and I'm not a false brother. I'm not superficial. I am as real as you going to get one. I'm not one of pretense and false. I'm real. Hallelujah. So we greet you all, our precious friends, and you, our enemies. We want you to take a front row seat. And you shall eat not of the dainties of darkness, but you shall eat of the dairy, the fruitfulness uh, of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And so we shall feed you. If your enemy is hungry, you will be hypocritical not to feed them. So I feed my enemies. I don't know how well it's going to stay down. I don't know if it will give you fatness on your bones. But I certainly shall feed you with the riches of your truth. Hallelujah. To life or your condemnation, either one, Yah does not send his word out, that it returns unto him, shall void and empty. But it shall go, not only does it go, but accomplish that which it is set forth and the purpose of it to do to life or to death yeah. to life or to death yeah. you're not going to eradicate or rectify or correct anyone's ways hell we having a job trying to keep us right The reason we can't be honest with others is because we're not honest with ourselves. We perpetuate the delusion of our damnable minds. You don't give a damn about me if you can't tell me the truth. Yah loves Yisrael. He upbraids them. He put the rod on their arse. This is a generation of hypocrisy. It's a damn wicked one. And that's a fact. What a beautiful day here in Jefferson, South Carolina. So we gather in Yerushalayim, the city where Yashalom is lamad. It is taught, the perception, the knowledge of it is revealed that even the simple ones, the babes, the little taff can understand the ones that suck from mama's breasts. Yes. Because this altar is one thing that it does is alter their countenance. When we are stubborn and wicked as hell, the Torah will never alter anything for you. I don't give a damn who you are. You can talk all you want to. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Hallelujah. We must let the ma'or, the light of your shine. And when the ma'o of your shan, then men will ask you for the reason of your tikva. Why do you have tikva? Hope in these things, in the dabarim of Yah, the word of Yah. That's the honesty of Yah. Got one precious Sophonia to Zephaniah. Zephaniah got him killed among the wicked. We call him Stephen. He said, You damn stiff necked. He said, you have not received the brit milah and uncircumcised in your life. He says, you do always, not sometimes. You do always resist Haru'ach HaKodash. You resist the spirit of Yah. And those beasts ran upon that precious illuminated truth of Yoshua HaMashiach. They stopped their ayin their ears of any kind of intelligent reasoning they stopped them up and they ran upon that man and gnawed him with their filthy mouth their stinking breath all on him as they would say in the days their funky mouth you trying to spew sweet and bitter water out of that damn filthy hole of darkness it just doesn't happen you get a polluted water 
Once you get a polluted water, it's not worth anything. You got all kinds of diseases and bacteria of death. And everything that the roots absorb that water, it causes sickness yeah. and death. Give me the truth, yeah. yeah. Give nothing bestow upon me to grant it by your permission. The revelation, Yoshua HaMashiach. We need that above all things in this hour that we are in. Why? Because there is an approaching holocaust. And death shall cry out unto the ones in the womb where they shall rot in the bellies of their iman. It cries out unto the age and the old for the fire shall burn. This ish, this Ebra, the anger of Yah. That is Ebra only a, attains to him. There is no other expression of that anger. Yes. And we are like a bunch of damn clowns playing around fraternizing with the world, appeasing the world, and trying to satisfy and give some kind of cessation to the world of their pleasing acceptance and their adoration of us that we don't give a damn about the Most High. We pretend We pretend. We're not real and they know you're not real. Huh? And so we see this aggressive, the ish. Let no one tell you that man is not of great value. He made him. In his image, his power. So he calls him, uh, as he calls the very utterance of his voice, uh, he calls him an ish, and he calls his fire an ish as well. I-S-H-A-S-Y-H, fire. And he associates no other thing with the breath of his inferno of a fire, but not. This damn deceitful whore of Christianity and religious uh, pontification. Uh, oh, I trust no man, you damn fool. Uh, woman got to be sick in her mind if she doesn't trust her man. We got to be sick if we don't trust Yorkshire Hamashiach. You don't trust because there's no trust in you. You're full of deceit and lies. You do every kind of damn corrupt thing. Even when a man disappoint me, that doesn't remove my trust for him. This is a wicked generation. That's how stupid we have been dumbed down. Let no man tell you nothing. But what man is speaking to you? Is he of the essence of that damn wicked heart of yours? The man of the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know that man but Yah? And that's why he sends forth the power of his dabarim, his testimony, his word, his instructions uh, unto us uh, to refine us uh, and keep us in confinement uh, by the seal uh, of his approval. And because we don't have the strong men to guard the house, we'll let every damn thing in. Don't tell me what I... Don't try it with me, all right? I'm not playing with this silly generation. Don't waste my time. I mean that. 
Well, I want to ask you a question. How do you figure the more of them? Tell me, how do you figure them? Well, I'll do it this way. Then why ask me, you damn fool? You're not going to listen to me. Did they listen to the Nabi, Nabi They didn't listen to the prophets. And they're not going to listen if a prophet rose up with a great, great, great voice. They're not going to listen to him. They didn't listen to Yoshua Hamashiach. They didn't listen to Moshe. They didn't listen to Obadiah. They did not listen uh, uh, to Sophonia. They did not listen uh, to Jeremiah. They did not listen to any of them. They did not listen to Yakahan the Imasa. And yet uh, the hoish old mama, knowing she's a hoish, she says, uh, what do you want? Give me his head. Yah says, I give my head. I give my head. He's given his whole rush for Yisrael. He's given us everything. I'm going to teach and preach a little bit today. We see the tremendous tide of death approaching. These wicked nations of the earth are crumbling. They have no infrastructure. They have no sound resounding economy. Yeah? And I want to say to you, you damn liars, that tell people to buy silver and gold, uh, you don't buy Yisrael. No man is going to be able to chana. It is not buying a piece of bread. It is not having that redemptive power of the light of your sure in his mind that would all carry that is what Kana is to redeem, to bring one from under the power of the dredge of death. You're not going to do it, and you are a dirty bastard for doing that. They are dirty bastards. You cowards that have problem with me using the word manzia, they have no birthright in the kingdom. They are telling these poor women that are struggling, how do you tell someone in Cyprus to buy gold? How do you tell one, someone in Ethiopia to buy gold or silver? How do you tell one in Madagascar? How do you tell someone in Brazil or Chile? Down in Mexico, when the, a few pesos a day uh, gives them enough for a little uh, tortillas, uh, a little corn, uh, and maybe some rice or some water to drink. And you dirty bastard, you put that on the poor, the indolent, poor mother trying to live, an old woman, her husband. You got them buying gold and silver. You are a child of hell. And Yahshua calls his vengeance to rest upon these yeah. damn dogs. Yeah. I tell you all to buy the truth yeah. of the messenger's mouth, yeah. any messenger that speaks truth. And you will know the truth, Yisrael. Yeah. It will cause you to abide in the Torah of Yah, to continue in the Torah of Yah. And then only then will you experience the truth, and it shall make you free. It shall make you have hush. Have hush. As a free and as a free indeed. Your love is free. To receive the truth of Yah. The time is upon us. The akhrith, the days, the time is upon us. It is one of the most spectacular things, time. You cannot measure it. Man tries to associate some kind of term of numerology, but you can't measure time. You cannot. We say that we don't even know what we're saying. Because now, that's what he says. But what is now? Once I cause that syllable of the now, what is now? So Yah gives us a reference to all things. He uses the words Yom. Yom. In that hour, that Yom, that month, that day, we shall prepare our minds, Yisraya. Even in the most scientific types of uh, physics, they cannot give you a concept of time. Only Yah can. He tells us that the time is at hand. So if you can look at the end of your hand, you know what time is. I want to show us as a nation, I'm going to teach today, and I want to read a few articles, Yah's will. 
that we are in an hour of such approaching devastation and our minds are ignorant as they come. There's a precious nobi that we call, we call him the weeping one, Yeremiah. He writes instructions unto Yisra'ya by the mouth, the feth, the tongue of Yah, his speech, what he said. And he gives us a precise description while we don't know what's transpiring. We don't understand the signs of the time. Just like Daniel, yeah, he says that the wicked men are those that are rasha, criminals against Torah. They shall perform the acts of rasha. They will do wickedly. And he said, and they shall not. Yah says, lo, no way in hell they're going to understand. And they shall not understand. But he, uh, but he gives us an identity of a man. He says, but the sadiq, those that walk in the principles of Yah, that have the application of Torah in their minds, uh, he said they can discern. He uses the word binor. They understand both. Both. The day, yam, time. And then they understand the mishpatim of yam. We don't understand neither. We are fearful broken people without substance. We are people that have no access in our being, in our minds. In our hearts, because hell, the only thing we want to please is flesh. You might as well say, help me, Yah. I want to give us a precise description. And I'm going to move somewhat rapidly today. The Nobi Yeremiah, he says unto us, as the utterance of Yah speaks to him, to write in a sefer, in a book, to khatab, to make sure that it will never be dissolved. It will always be with the people. Yeah. And he instructs him here as to the character of his people. Isaiah, Jeremiah 4, chapter 4, verse 22. He shows us the possession. He says, for my people, my I, my I, my nation, my people, when Yah talks about Yisra'ah, he tends to use the word, the noun, am, am. That this is my nation, my people, these are the ones in my bosom. When he talks about the heathens or the Gentiles, he is talking about a goe, a nation or the goeen, nations. And yet he classify Yisra'ah that way because we have learned the ways of the heathens. We have learned them well. He says, for my people, uh, he says, they are evil. They are foolish. To understand evil, you must understand that that is a mind that despises. It's so near. There's a hatred there that is so pronounced. It hates the wisdom of Yastura instructions of Yah's Torah to bring understanding uh, and then they smirk it off uh, with their ignorant look as though that uh, I know more about that than you they mock the wisdom of Yah yeah. that's an evil prideful beast of hell yeah. that's what Yah says his people he did not say the people of the devil he says my people, they cannot discern the time of this great calamity that is approaching you, Yahuda. You don't even see death upon you, Yahuda. You don't, Yisraya, see the clouds that are gathering. Is one thing about Yah, he always leads his people in the midst, in the midst of the greatness of darkness by one thing, by fire. By fire. He leads them by fire. Oh, I shall. I will prove it out. 
we hear things and it doesn't calculate in our minds because we're thinking about the fried chicken. He says, my people, they are evil, they're foolish. And then he says they have low, L-O, low, no, not. They have no, they have no, they have low, they have not even the yada. They have not known me. They have not experienced ya. They have not in their activities to strive to learn to understand him. We strive for every damn wicked thing there is. To understand every thread of gossip. To be busy bodies in one another's home running to and fro. It is the truth, old woman. He said, they don't yonder me. They don't know me. They have not experienced me. They have learned me. And then he uses the word they are sakhar. He said, they are the most damnable, foolish. They are foolish. They act foolish, they are silly, they laugh with folly, they're always laughing, they're not sober, they all laugh and they're silly as hell. The young ones are silly as hell, they're full of folly. This is uh, the descriptive superlatives of the people of God. Did he not say my people love? And they think that that's a beautiful attribute. It's not a damn beautiful attribute. It's one that is childish and immature. It is right, my young Ark. He said, they are sottish. They're sakhar. They're foolish in their ways and their activities. They're silly. They're fat with their lust and they're fat with their folly. But they have not been fade, fat, made fat by the riches of Torah. They're fat to participate in folly because they don't comprehend the clouds and the time upon them. But to do for Yah, they're fat and sottish and lazy. I didn't say it, the book said it. You got a problem, you take it up with the master, the creator. I have no problem with what he's saying. Because he identified my traits. But yet he gives me the remedy uh, to resolve that. He said, they are so silly, they are fat, they are so... They're fat with folly and trivial pursuit of things. They're full of shekka, lies and joking and posturing and clowning. As a young man, I never liked clowning. As a boy, I didn't like that. I don't play with men. And I don't play with women either. Period. And I don't want my heifer plan either. There's nothing more vile than the crackling of a woman's voice. Laughter. It's the damn truth. You get upset with me. I don't give a damn. Hallelujah. You say that we are the sortish being children that, that are stubborn and hard-headed. You crack the backside, they go back and do it. Isn't that what happens? You crack it again, they go back and do it. And we tend to, as parents, I've seen it, I see it, we tend to carry a heavier hand on the little ones than we do ourselves. Yet you see no kind of resolution in your life, you're still doing the same damn things. And yet you're more critical to critique them. Oh, I believe in bumping that buttock, but it must be done righteously. I had a heifer that lived that we had one that she would put her babies in the tub and whip. I said, you Jezebel, if you do it again, I will call the law on you. I meant that damn thing. While she was here, she was too afraid of me to do it again. I said, you heifer, you do that again. Oh, you damn hypocrites. We do things that are worse. We look at that. Oh, and yet we impel your sure co continuously with the vileness of our wickedness. We are always looking. Uh, when we hear something of someone else, we think that that is so full of disdain. And yet we don't consider ourselves. Uh, 
Oh, have a done that hell. You've done worse than that, Yisra'ya. We don't even have the ability to understand the time that we're in. I'd rather someone tell me I'm wicked and I'm dumb than for me to pretend and think that I'm wise and I'm mysterious in the matters of Yah. We don't ever consider our wicked selves. I did tell the heifer that. And I was mad too. Yeah, I was. I was angry. I said, heifer, don't you ever do that. He said, we have low. The word low, N-O, L-O in the Hebraic, it means that it cannot be. When Yah says no, he means no. That's why he said, let your ye or your chin be chin, and your lo be no. Anything else is sin. He said they have no binaw, they have no being, they have no ability to discern and understand. They have no insight. I am not saying this. This is what our father is saying. Yes. He said they have no insight at all. Yes. He said we have the chukmah, we are wise to do rah, evil. We think evil. We ponder evil. We create evil with lies and folly in our yeah. minds. They're wise to lie and to pretend. They're wise to hide their wicked ways. When your ways are right, you can help anyone. You can help the stranger on the street when your ways are right before you. When your heart is right. They're wise to do evil. What, what a testimony. To do evil, but to do yatab, that which is right, by the instructions of the Torah. To do that which is yatab, to rejoice in the abundance of Yah's truth, to be glad. We don't rejoice in that. Hell, we rejoice in a donut, and I tell you, those, uh, I had to rejoice in those. And I had to beg, and I found me one, and I savored it. I didn't eat it all. I ate a little piece. I'm going to eat a little piece today. And if I get greedy, I'm going to eat it all. You understand? Don't make no more now. <laughs> he said, but to do right, to do the things that are yatab, that are pleasing, and are satisfying unto the heart of Yah. They have no da'ats. They have no knowledge. They have not learned to do it. They have no understanding of how to operate in this sphere of Yah. For what reason that we may be fruitful? That our lives may be fruitful. And if this is the spiritual state of Yisra'ah, and if you read there in the book of Yeremiah, I don't have the time to go verse or chaptuv, chaptuv of the chitvei, you will see that Yah is warning the nation of Yisrael. Yeah. He is warning uh, Yehuda. You think you understand what is about to transpire? You think the revelation of this great holocaust uh, is revealed unto you and you have no concept because uh, you're dumb. You're dumber than an ass. You're dumber than a jackass because the jackass knows it, yada, its master's crib, the place where the corn is. Yeah. And the master doesn't muzzle him because he, he treads the corn, because he has plowed the corn and gave his master abundance of the corn. The master has sown one grain, and there are many years on the corn stuck and kernels. That are multiplied and he doesn't muzzle him. He allows him to eat. Y'all yeah. doesn't muzzle us when he comes to his storehouse. Yeah. His utsa, his utsa, the place where the plenty and the abundance of Yah, where the supply is rich. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. We do it. 
because of our wickedness so we don't understand what is taking place Yisrael. and as I began this teaching there's only one reason because of the Nahash, the mind of a people he says I'm going to sin above Torah and yet the song says it's so high the mind of Yah it doesn't reason as though our mind reasons it is so wide, the breadth of our sins, we have covered them under every stone. And yet the dumb of Yoshua HaMashiach reaches as far as the east is from the west. And we are lower than a snake's belly, yet to the depths of our corruption and our vile nature, the dumb of Yoshua flows to the depths of the foremost reaches of our sins. So I don't want to go over the Torah. I don't want to go around it. I want to come in at the door. And your shoe is that door. If I try to enter the Torah any other way, I'm a thief and a robber. If I negate your shoe, Hamashiach, I am a damn thief. I am of my father, Hashatan. I'm of the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. He hated truth. He did not abide in Torah. When our minds do not abide that we know that we are the seed of darkness. When this doesn't correct us, when we are, we are punctual in our continuous reprisals, our assault against you. You know something is twisted in our damn minds, Yisrael. Yeah? Yoshua said to the woman that was caught in the act of every kind of vile thing uh, there was. Uh, he said, you go as he says, as she is the representor or represents what Yisrael. He commands us, go and sin no more. Yeah. You don't go in Hatab. Uh, you don't go and defile the Torah in your ritualistic forms uh, of your ways and activities uh, that denounce you. That's what sin does. Uh, denounces the Most High. Damn hypocritical generation. I can see why Shaul says that times I just want to go and be with Yah, but yeah. I know for the time it's most expedient for me just to linger just a little longer. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. I shall. Yeah. Hallelujah. As I said to us in Yeshaya, the king of Babel said, let me read this quickly. I'm going to move expeditiously. He says in Yeshaya, Isaiah 14, 13, as I stated to us, this is the constitution of the mind. This mind that opposes the testimony of Yah in Yeshua HaMashiach. It is the mind of pride. It is the mind of Ga'un, gah, ga'un. It is a mind that is hubris, it stinks. It is a mind that replaces and substitute truth for infatuations. But this is what the mind of Bevel, those that are deeply confused and troubled. That's why this vile nation and the nations of these nuclear armaments how they say unto Almighty Yah, we don't give a damn what you say. We have risen to the pinnacle of great power, and there's not a damn thing you can do. There's a reason they think like that. In order to understand that, you must search the Torah. That's why we cannot discount a man. You judge him. The steps of a Sadiq man, the order by Yah, he commands. He is the one that Sava, he sets them in place. He commands their footstep. Yeah. He tells us to watch a Sadiq man, yeah. a perfect man, a man that is Tomi, that has been made complete, his desires complete in Torah. He said, For the end of that man is Shalom. Yeah. Why would he tell us that if we don't trust anyone? This is a stupid generation. It's immature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We said to one other day, I trust the ark with my wife, my children. Something gets wrong if you can. You don't have to worry about trusting me with your wife. 
Not one bit at all, man. You don't have to worry about that. Period. I've defrauded no man's wife, no man's daughter. Never touched any woman appropriately or any man. And will not do it. Will not. And that's a fact. That one you don't have on me. That one you don't. Hallelujah. And it doesn't make me great. I just understand the keeping power of Almighty Yah that He guards us. Listen to what He says here in Yeshua 14 13. Uh, he said, For you have said in your love, uh, I will allow, I will ascend. My mind is superior to Yah. I will excel above Torah. It's so high you can't get over it. I will allow, I will uh, excel uh, into the Shema'am. The nuclear power rained down upon the nations. A short time will call fire out of the heavens. The false prophet, the pseudo prophet, that will cause men great, poor, and wealthy, and they all shall bow down and worship him and say, Why can we not build an image unto the one that has instilled this power in them? And that's why in the mind of many uh, in this nation, the image of America, the image of his loss, the image of his uh, material gluttonous, uh, nothing this nation has done has been a blessing. Uh, well, we have nuclear power. Hell, it calls us uh, to be uh, careless. We don't conserve. Uh, we got water. Well, we had to walk down to the spring. Uh, as a young lad, I had to do it. Uh, well, we had to take a bath. We, we had to conserve and preserve. Uh, and we were very thankful for the small things. Uh, this is a nation that doesn't give a damn about uh, the multitude. Uh, I will ascend above Yad, I will exalt my say my royal dignity, my authority above him, above his stars. He said, I will sit in the place whereby the Moed place or the place to administer the Torah of Yah. Verse 14, I will ascend, I will become superior. I will Allah, just like they spell their damn God, Allah, A-L-L-A-H, Allah, Allah, Allah. It is a damn lie. Damn their God, damn Allah. These Muslims are cowards, that's why they stand back, come face to face. I will look sin above the heights of the clouds. And this is it. He says, I will be Dama. I will be in the same resemblance and the same spirit, the same nature. He said, I will be like the most high. That this is the mind of man. This is his superior thinking. This is how he thinks. This is his wickedness. Now, I, I want to touch on something and I want to I get to the essence of this message. All right? Or this teaching. This is the mind of man. This is how he thinks. I will Allah, I will be like Yah. There are things uh, I recall one day, Ach Simeon and I, we have our debates. I have no problem with that. I was debating, we were uh, carrying out our dissertations uh, as to how much should a man know. I want to know everything. I don't want to know everything. Yeah. It's not in the will of Yah for you to know everything. There are laws, there are torahs that Yah has laid down. Uh, just like the Tower of Babel, they said, Hell, uh, we're going to send into the heavens of Yah. We're going to throw him down. That's what it, it was all about. And the knowledge of man, it is excessive. Uh, it has gone beyond the benefit of man. Tell me what a damn computer does for us. Uh. Yeah. Oh, it gets knowledge quicker. Hell, we got knowledge quick when we in our days. Uh. It's burning out our brain cells. Uh. It's killing our babies with the cell phones. Uh. It doesn't do a damn thing for us. It's not beneficial. It's not healthy. It doesn't uh, uh, translate into health and wealth. You got a few rich bastards uh, that pry every dime out of you for the latest technology, for the latest gadget. And that is the truth. There are things this nuclear power man has gone beyond will show you my bath. He said, my thoughts are greater than yours. I will ascend above you. You think you got fire, baby. I'm going to show you what fire is. Listen to what Davi says here. In the humbleness of his nature, 
And I will show you there are things, Yisrael, that Yah has closed up with the Torah. He doesn't intend for us to open the door. Yeah. When he says unto the Milak, the cherub, he says, cast man out of the garden of the garden of Eden. And he put a Milak there. He put a messenger with fire. Yeah. That's what the Milak with the revolving sword. Uh, he had a sword of great strength and great power. He put a Milak there. That if anyone tries to enter into these uh, uh, parameters, uh, kill them all. Damn it, kill every last one of them. Kill mama, daddy, kill them all. That's what he meant. Yeah. And it's a fact, Yisrael. Yeah. Look what the Torah says. It says here in Tehillia, Psalms 131, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says in Psalms 131, verse 1, Davi says, he says, Abba, ya Omar, Yahweh. This is what he says. He says, my heart, my love, is not gaba, it's not haughty. It is not arrogant. It is not hubris. It is not full of pride. That's what he says. He says, my heart, my love is not gaba. It is not arrogant at all, yeah. It doesn't rise or raises itself up to a great Cassandra and say, I know everything. I got knowledge of everything. He said, no, my heart is. And although he was a king, he was a wise man. And the one that came out of his loins was wiser than him. And yet he brought death into the nation of Yisrael. You understand? I don't want to know everything. I want to know the things that he has galah, he has hope for me to understand to live righteous. And a damn nuclear bomb doesn't make me live righteously. You see, my heart is not gaba. It is not arrogant. It is not prideful. Love. I don't want to try to seek for the things of great height, and great knowledge. He said, nor are my eye in, his spiritual learning, uh, his natural, his intellectual capacity. He was a wise man, he was a king. Uh, he said, neither is my eyes. Uh, he said, it's not lofty. It's not room. Uh, it doesn't expand beyond the boundaries uh, of what you command. Uh, my eyes are not lofty. He said, neither, lo, do I halach exercise, permit myself uh, in great matters, in things that are beyond the control of the providence of man. And there are things that are beyond the control. I will show you the great magnitude of a nuclear bomb. He said, there are matters that are beyond my control. There are things, he saw in things that are too, there are things, Yisraya, that are too pala. I want to read the definition of that word pala because I made sure I put that down. This is what tuha is, pala. He says there are two pala. <clears throat> Things that are extraordinary, hard, and difficult things. To be, be beyond one's power. To be difficult to do. To be surpassing. To be extraordinary. Separated by distinguished action. Well, man has the power to create nuclear bomb, but he has no power to control it. When that took place in Ukraine, Pipriats, the lands are wasted to this day. That in Fukushima, you don't hear a damn thing about Fukushima, do you? And they died by the thousands. Diseases and death. It was nothing like what happened in Chernobyl. Within a radius of 100 miles plus around Chernobyl, it is death and the babies are sick. When a man begins to pry into uh, activities that are beyond his reach, uh, Yah says, I'm going to bring you down, Bassi, because uh, you have exalted yourself. You think you're going to become just like me. When Nimrod exalted his strength and his height, uh, Above the heavens. When he built a tower that it would take days to walk around. Not like these little things in New York City. Uh, that when the, when the airplanes they say hit, uh, they come falling down. They were building those towers, it says in the book of Hanak. Uh, Yesha. 
that when one brick fell, men wept. But when a man fell to his death, nobody even took notice. Because they had a conscience and a mind that was so high above the respect of man. And man didn't mean a damn thing to him. He had made man to be marvelous. When it's man that he is mindful of him. When it's man that he visits man. Now we in all of his royalty and power. He said, there are things too high for me. There are things too high for me. The things that Yah has shut off from us. The things that He has shut them. He has shut them off. He has affixed them. He has sealed them. And this is death. This is death. This is death. I don't care if you don't like me. Hallelujah. I want to give you a greater insight of that one thing. You must understand this in order to understand the fire of Yah, how it shall come upon the nations and by the same fire it's going to destroy by the same fire it's going to save us it's going to save us hallelujah it's going to save us it's going to deliver us hear this quickly in the book of Sharach the minister the prophet of great wisdom Sharach chapter 3 verse 20 he gives us a great Evaluation of the knowledge, the da'at of Yah. And the only way we're going to understand even the simplicity of Yah's truth is having the mind of Yahshua. Yeah. So this great orator of great intellectual and spiritual values of knowledge, he says here in Sharach, Sharach, chapter 3, verse 20, he gave the great credence unto Yah, he uses the word gadol, he says, for great is Ha'or, Ha'ak, the power, the might, the strength, the beauty of his excellence. Great is the power of Almighty Yahweh. He says, he is kabod, he is honored by who? The only, the humble, the pride and arrogant one. This nation doesn't honor Yah. I will show you why. It doesn't give a damn. It's principle, and that's why it introduced unto those out of the diaspora and those that came to the land of freedom and liberty. They came to the land of bondage. We're bound with house payments, car payments, uh, tail payment. Uh. Like our auction says to us, my issue reminded us, uh, talk is not cheap. Uh. Everybody is chit-chatting and talking and talking uh, and there is nothing uh, of value that is coming out of the damn talk. Uh, they're texting and waxing and tweeting and dicking uh, and doing every kind of damn thing there is. Uh, diction and dictating. Uh, they have not grown spiritually. They have not been revived. Uh, it keeps them in tune, their minds and the folly and bondage. Uh, but the message of Yah says uh, he is out of the humble uh, and the lowly. Uh, did not David said, not my eyes. He said, my eyes, they have not been lofty. You're not going to twist me in the Torah, all right? Because I spend too much time. Why are you sleeping and slumbering? I'm up. I don't boast in that, but I am up. Verse 21. He tells us to Bokhash, seek. When one seeks, there is a, there's a great passion and a desire that promotes one's all and all. That is what Bokhash is, to seek. Yeah. He says, seek not. To seek not. Don't go beyond the sciences. Don't go beyond the math. He says, seek not what is too difficult for you. There are things that are too difficult for man. You cannot quench the fire of a nuclear attack. You're not going to be able to buy nothing with silver and gold. This beast is going to cause the fire to rain down for one purpose. He is trying to eradicate, to eviscerate all Israel. Yes. These are heathen nations against Yah. Yes. Yah says, don't even seek things uh, that are not, that are too difficult for you. He said, neither search or investigate what is beyond your power. It's beyond man's power. How do you create something that is so demonic and so vile and so destructive? That will burn your babies in the womb and mom is standing there and your babies burn. 
Those two bombs they dropped on Hiramoshia, Hiroshima, and Nakastakia. What are those bombs? What are those bombs? Just one nuclear, 100,000 megaway bomb. It is a thousand times more powerful. It kills everything. It poisons everything. What mind thinks of something like that? It poisons everything. Your streams of water. You, you know, there in the Ukraine, the only thing that Russia was concerned about, uh, I don't recall the name of the river, but it is the river that supplies all the water to Russia. There in Pripyat. And they was troubled that the layers of concrete, I don't care if you got it this thick, uh, is going through. The layers of concrete will not hold that uranium and that phosphorus from seeking into the streams and kill your babies and destroy them. Yeah. That's what they were concerned with. And if the reactor two had have gone off, they said half of Europe would have been inhabitable. Half of it. The trees, the, 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 the forests, uh, the mutation of animals, you know that's not Yah. You know that's not the law of Yah. He made us to be governed by Torah. That's the matter of a shatan. I would exhort myself. I'll fight fire with fire. You ever heard that said about that? You got to fight fire with fire, baby. Eh? And that's what the devil says. I will fight you with fire. I will burn your children. Oh, if I had to kill mine, I'll kill yours. And Yah says, you damn fool. I like you, boy. But you do nothing without mine permission. Just like they came running that day, oh, the fire came down from heaven, Eob, and it destroyed your sons, and only ours is left alive to come tell you. You know, says to the devil when he says, uh, can I try your boy? He said, Eob, he's a man that is perfect, did he not say? Yeah. Perfect and upright? Well, ain't nobody perfect. These damn pigs. They don't want to deal with their sin. That's why they say that. Yes. It says that the man was told me. He was complete in Yah. His ways satisfied Yah. He pleased Yah. He did that which was righteous, sadiq before Yah. And the fire came down. And boy, that servant, that ebbed he read. <laughs> said, boy, it consumed them. So the devil said, I got fire too. You have granted it unto me. For he was the covering, he was a cherub, the covering of Yah's throne. And he was like a fire, the brilliancy. Yah is Ruach Yisrael. He is not the image of a man that we see. He is not the image of a man or what we see. When he made him as an image, he made him in his preciseness, in the power of his mind, the will of his mind. And he formed him. He formed him. Not Yah is a Ruach. He is Ruach. A Ruach is life. There is no life without Almighty Yahweh. You understand? We see the image of his power, the might of his power in Yahshua HaMashiach. And that's what we got to see. He's not relegated to some little form. That's why he's everywhere. He's the Ruach. He's in China this morning on the Shabbat. He's in Australia. He's in uh, Zimbabwe. He's in Liberia. He's in Iraq. He's in Iran. He's in, ba he's in India. He's all over. Oh, I know what the Torah says, that he's a man of war. He identifies himself to the nature and the state of man that he may understand that you think you're a man of war. You, don't under you think that all your skills, you're a warrior. You have not seen a warrior until you've seen me. My warring ability is much greater than yours. He said, don't seek to or investigate things beyond your power. There are things I don't want to investigate. I don't want to understand the mathematical formulas uh, to, to generate such a, uh, a machinery that will uh, be taken and used for death. 
Everything we have produced death. I don't care if it's the big tractors uh, that till the land with a man, till the soil with a horse and with his plow. It was much more healthy. Uh, it was a law for the land. Uh, he lived within our boundaries. Now these mega bastards, uh, they put out everything. Uh, they take all the waste from the cities. Uh, listen, all the waste from the cities. Uh, all the dung, it goes into your bread. Honey, when you eat bread, uh, you eating bread, where about they put bush on it? Duke, duke, all right? Uh, you can think you're all sophisticated. It's the Duke Duke on it, okay? Uh, it is the gay Luther. I don't want to say the shit, but it's the gay Luther, all right? Uh, you sip in your orange juice. All oh, that dog came from New York uh, down to the fields of Florida, and they put them on the orange orchards. Uh, well, I'm, I'm such a naturalist. I'm organic. I'm vegan. Ah, oh, you little silly boy. Whatever I sit before me, I bless it. It's all right. I want some fried chicken, I eat that. If I want me some, 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 some fried oatmeal, I eat it. may not be the best thing for me, but that's all right. I shall, my friend. Men get infatuated with, oh, I, I do this. You silly boy. You don't even look like you have any strength at all. You look like a little weak thing. Give me the fried, uh, fried salmon. Give me some fried bash. Mass. It's some crappy bluegill, white bass. Give me that. Can't go around the Torah, y'all. Yeah. Quickly. In verse 22, but what is commanded? See, there are things that Yah has savah, what has been commanded and assigned to you. What is has been assigned to us? A Torah, hasn't it? The truth of Yah, he says, think thereupon with great honor, with reverence. Why are we trying to go beyond that? Why we want to know how to burn somebody? Why we want to create a gun called the Barrett that's sitting in here with a wall three feet thick? This, this is nothing. It's a shotgun. It's called the Barrett. A father and his son down there in Georgia. These are, these are devils of death. These are devils of death. The Barrett. And it will shoot to a three-foot wall. Do you understand what that is? And will kill you on the other side. Just like that sniper that was killing, he shot a woman in Iraq. She was holding a baby. He said she had a grenade. But how do you see a woman with a grenade? How do you know it's a grenade? How do you know it wasn't a bottle? Tell me. She was nearly two miles away, and he had the wreck. And he says, uh, I have no emotions attached to that. I'm proud of it. And yet the same man that shot that woman in the head, a soldier back from Iraq, they were shooting, target practicing one day. He pulled out something, say, baby, boom, 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 boom. And he dropped him dead. You live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. He killed the beast. How do you know that? How do you tell? I don't care. You tell me you got a plane up a, a mile and a half. He's going to tell you the woman got a grenade. You don't know that. And shot that woman and a baby killed him. And he was, he, he was not vilified. He was honored or what the world call glorified. Damn glorifying. Glorification. He was esteemed and exalted in the media. Oh, he, he had the record. Nobody like him. And he did close to 200 kills as a sniper. And one killed him. You're not going to get by, Yisrael. You sold to the flesh of the flesh. You're going to reap corruption. And that's a fact. Can I move quickly here? Let me move. Again, he says in verse 22, But what is commanded and assigned to you, think upon, uh, there are... There, think thereupon uh, with reverence, uh, for it is not needful for you to see with your eyes uh, the things that are hidden or lamb. There are things that have been concealed. The things that Yah has or lamb, He has concealed them. It's not best for us to see. How, how do you understand the nuclear fusion uh, or the splitting of an atom and that it is so ferocious that uh, there is an intense fire? We don't need to know that. We just need to know how to start a fire. And keep ourselves warm. I don't need to understand the molecular structure of a fire. I don't need to search that out. I don't need to understand all diseases. You know, it's amazing that if you go in the drug stores, they do nothing but peddlers of drugs. 
But if you look behind the counter, and I do that at times, uh, you look there are not a whole bunch of drugs. You see lines of people in Walmart. You would think that that way. Those little spaces are little small spaces. Uh, come on now, talk to me. When you go to place, go when you go to Walmart again, or uh, y'all mart or we market. When you go to y'all mart again, go down there because I, even when I go in the morning, I see the lines. I like to get in and get out. <clears throat> You will see these little compartments about five, six pharmacists, uh, and they're peddling drugs all day. And little compartments is not big, and I look and I say, you know, all the diseases they say, nearly 150 different arthritis. You tell me these are the only drugs that are prescribed for all the multi dynamics of all these diseases? There are not that many drugs. And I don't care what prescription you got, when you go there, they can fill it. I don't care whether you go to CVS, I don't care if you go to Walmart, whatever your prescription is, they will fill it. And you look back there and say, hell, where? So you prescribe that for that for the same thing? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. These are rough. Uh, we better get that in our minds. Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe there are things that we, it's important for us to know. We need to know how to mend and help each other. To heal each other beginning here in the hearts. We need to know how to be compassionate and kind. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of men is wax cold. There ain't nothing like a cold heifer. Nothing like a cold wicked man. Nothing like that. I will, man. I will. Nothing like a cold, wicked woman. Now, the Torah talks much about that now. About a woman that's cold and wicked now. That's what the Torah says. Hallelujah. He says in verse 23, Do not gara, do not meddle or stir. Uh, 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 Shimon says he's going to stir up our pure minds by way of remembering. But he says, Do not meddle in is what is beyond your task. Has Yah given us the task to, uh, to, to understand the dynamics of aerodynamics or to uh, understand the path or the flight pattern of uh, rockets and bombs? Uh, to understand every kind of medical terminology and every kind of disease? No. Although these things come, Yah says, I will show you, you damn fools. I will make this more complex and difficult. You spend billions uh, and nobody's healed. There's only one healing. When we go back to the way Yah commands us, there's healing in his Torah. He sent forth his word to Rafa Mape to bring healing and health to his nation. Oh, he said, you think you got something on that? Boy, you just don't know. I will have that mutating and you want to know what it is. And so they spend billions and trillions of dollars whereby the only the poor are suffering. And yet they create these diseases and bacteria and you won't even give the people a damn piece of bread or a bandage to heal them. That's not of Yah. He says, don't even go beyond the boundaries of things uh, that are not according to Torah. There are things that bring life and death. Uh, I don't want to try to experience death. Uh, when I leave this world, I'm gone. Uh, I don't want to try to bring somebody from the dead uh, and explain to me the channels of death. Uh, yeah. I don't want to live forever in this biological body. I want to live in the eternal body of Yah. Yeah. Trying to defy age and death. I'm not taking one damn thing to defy the denigration of this damn body. Yeah. Let it die and go back to the earth. We came from the dirt, dust like y'all said. I will not want to make him a liar. We shall return back to the dust. You can mummify them all you want to. The mummified Mr. Chavez and I like Chavez. I really did. He didn't let the greedy bastards rape his people. Yeah. He didn't let the shells uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, and the uh, what is this one down here? The Phillips and all of them rape his people. Whereby gas would not be affordable to them. He said, you get it for 10 cents a gallon, people. We'll sell it to them. They can sell it for what they want to. And so they vilified the man as a communist, as a dictator. And he wasn't going to let those corrupt, wicked bastards there that love money more than they love the people to rob his people. That's what it was about, Yisrael. And the media vilified this man. Sure they did. And that's a fact. 
That's a fact. Hallelujah. Don't meddle in things. Again, verse 22. Do not meddle uh, in what is beyond your task. Uh, for matters too great for human understanding uh, have been shown to you. Now this is what he is saying to Yisrael. There are matters uh, for us uh, that are beyond uh, human understanding have been shown to us. What? The dam of Yorkshire HaMashiach. People don't understand that the power of his name. Uh, the power of his Torah. These are matters that are beyond the ability for the scientists uh, to understand. Beyond the physicists and that great knowledge, they think it's great knowledge, uh, is beyond the ability, the simplicity of the dam of Yahshua. Yah said, don't even give yourself over unto that. With much wisdom or much knowledge of things come vexation and worrying. You're trying to study this and trying to understand this kind of disease or this sickness. You, you find yourself, the traits uh, will become part of your personality. And there's nothing wrong with you and you think something is wrong with you. Uh, you have mentally uh, morphed into that thing that you have sought to understand. Uh, it has become controlling in your mind. Uh, that's a fact, my young uncle. Why well, I want to understand the nature of a pedophile or rapist is a damn dog. He's a demon. Why well, well, I want to understand the very genetic construct of a, of a mass murderer. Why? Well, oh, but there are people that seek that out. Why well, I want to understand the most massive ways to burn and to kill people. No, show them the simple ways to feed themselves and to be healthy and to live. I don't care how long you live, but you live with strength and assurance and your life is vibrant. I want to live like that. Yes. Yes. Me meet one of those um, rules every now and then to help me on the path. I, I have to have one, all right? Okay, then. Leave it alone. Come on, Yisrael. Yes. The things that are beyond our ability. The things that Yah has sealed. The things that He has sealed. And the approaching desolation of great nuclear power, he has sealed that. You haven't seen nothing. We have not seen. Uh, may I continue to read this? He says this in Shirach. Please, you all, get the book of Shirach and Yeshah and Enoch. They're valuable books. If you can get them for five dollars a book. Cheap. Listen to what he says here. In Shirach 324. He says, for many, Rabbi, abundantly, much, exceedingly, for many are, he used the word Oshak, many are deceived. They have been violated, their minds have been defrauded, their conscience, their knowledge, many are deceived. How? Oh, that preach man they call David Roberts, he deceived so many, many are all shocked, they deceive by their own vain opinion. The word opinion is simply judgment, by their own vain, sharp, empty judgment. That's how you deceive. Nobody deceiving you, you Jezebel, you little weak, coward thing of a boy. You know how he deceived me for what? For $50? Then I'm a low, I, I'm not even a player. I was in the world. I'm, in my young days, I made more money than that. I would bet a man $500. I mean, I could spit from here, I'd say $200. And I knew once I threw that amount on him, he got nervous. He, yeah, I would bet like that. He said, man, I could spit all the way to that one, $200. I said, hawk it up what you want to. I want to see that. Lay it down, man, boom. And he could spit from here. He got nervous. Mouth got dry, spit from here. And I said, you want, you want to add it up some more? That's right. You said, but, but pony up, pony up. Here it is, bam. We're deceived by our own vain judgment. We're deceived, many are deceived by vain opinion, for their hasty judgment has led many astray. Well, I know that's what it means. That, that's what it means, man. Come on, hold. That's not what it means. No? You're trying to define something by your own opinion, your own judgment uh, that has been nurtured in deceit and the fall of your own heart. Your own heart has deceived you. Come on, that's not the fact of the matter. 
You have gone hastily to make assessment. Uh, and that's what this nation does. Any nation that doesn't uh, uh, become a, a part of her little agenda, they bring them down. They try to destroy them. Uh, if they don't have the faggot agenda, damn all faggots, damn the butch bull daggers, uh, damn the faggots teaching your babies uh, and laying hands on your babies uh, and nurturing your babies, shame on you, shame on you, daddy. Uh, get them out of the damn schools. Uh, sleep in a tent. To get your babies out of there. Let mama sit in a tent. Get your wood burning stove. Put your nice floor on there. Get your piece of land somewhere. Hallelujah. He said, For the hasty judgment have led many astray. Uh, and look at this. Well, this is my opinion. I tell folks, your opinion doesn't mean a damn thing to me. I say, You know what opinion is? Well, well you know, uh, I know what an opinion is. Well, I say, What is it? Oh, well, you know, this is my opinion. I know you told me that once. You're going to tell me again. I want you to define the word opinion. Well, you know why? You know, this is my opinion. I, I, I just believe it. Well, but you haven't defined what opinion is. Well, I just told this is my opinion. Then you know, I said, you're an ignorant jackass. You're full of pride. You don't want to tell you. I say, your opinion is simply your nature of assessing the matter, making judgment, making assessment. Uh, and this is what you have deduct. Well, it's wrong. You don't have to be harsh. You say you're a man of God. Hell no, I'm not a man of God. Damn God. That's how I say it. They hang up on me. I'm glad I don't have time. Yesterday. I don't have time for this folly, this juvenile. I can tell those that have the pleasantry of spirit when they call, I won't talk to this one. And there are those that, she hears me all the time because I turn the speaker on. I don't have, come on. And she hears what they're saying. She'll say What's wrong with this world? They don't run rough shots over me, you understand? They don't, son. I don't even know where it comes from. I know where it comes from, by the Ruach. Yeah. I don't have to think of what I have to say. But it sure does come. That is pronounced too. He said, many have judged, many of the hasty judgment have led astray, and wrong opinion or an evil suspicion that has caused their thoughts to slip. Well, they're going to rise up. We had 19 people to bomb the World Trade Center. And Mr. Bush says they were harbored in Iraq. And we're going to damn it, kill them all. Fight the warship. We want to bring Mrs. Saddam down. Why? Because the bankers and the world powers that be. Uh, and these effeminate, these men, come on, these rich powers. They look effeminate and nerdy and uh, funky looking. Fat heads and big ears, uh, little old skinny neck shoulders, and come on, they look retarded and, and, and twisted. Yeah. Miss Bush, you got a bomber. Yeah. Let me go down here to Texas and have big bubble to do a big hog and some tea, and we got a bomb. And they bombed the man. And the country's in desolation. Shiite Shunis, and they say they're Muslims. Same spirit of this damn thing we call Christendom has gone through the world and robbed and killed and made people convert to this whore. Yeah. Well, this is part of the heritage of Judaism, but it's not part of the heritage of Israel. Yeah. There is no inheritance rights in Christianity. There are no pillars in that whore that are the pillars of Yah. Because she, first of all, denounced the thing that Yah tells us to Zachah HaShabbat. She doesn't even remember the Shabbat. She has given a superficial name, a damn Jesus and a Lord, a Baal, a damn God. There is no definity to the word God. You can't find it. You cannot find the word God. It is a non-existent, just like Holocaust. It can't be equated to what happened to those they call Jews. How do you know? Because I'm a student. I'm a student. I was sent to one the other day. I can take 20 minutes and I can give you a dissertation that is so dynamic. You say, oh man. Wow, he said all that 20 minutes? Woo! How long do you think these big poor houses, preachers that are making Million dollars a year. He gets up. Mr. Osteen down there in Texas, he gets up for about 30 minutes every whole day. He do tw twice a day. And the folks go there, oh, Joe. Yeah. 
That's all he does, a grinning devil. <laughs> well, I just got joy. Me, that's not joy, man. That's folly. <laughs> oh, I just love everybody. Well, I, I have no hell to put nobody in. <laughs> I, I don't have nothing against gays. <laughs> or gays going to hell. Well, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> no faggot going into the kingdom. They're dogs. Every fag dog going to hell. Every faggot dog, every butch bulldog, she's going to hell. Every lie, every drunk, every man that defies the Torah, every one of you, Sunday thumpers, you're going to hell. You Baptist, you Methodist, you Pentecost, you're all going to hell. You Muslim, you Hindus, all. He's going to save a remnant. He's going to save a small book here of the whole. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, these are people without eyes. Your shoes, y'all said that they have eyes where they see not without eyes. You shall want light. Profess not the knowledge, therefore, that you have not. Don't speak on things that you don't have. Because you got one sentence of a matter you want, you want to become the authority on it. Don't speak on it. That, that's the generation today, isn't it? Is get a microwave, one line sentence of one word, and they know everything. Yah says that the messenger, the teacher of Yah says, if you don't understand the intricates uh, and the minutia of the matter, the small details of the thing, don't speak on it. I can't speak with any authority of the nuclear effects of people. I know what I've studied, and I know what I've looked at. I know what I've seen. I know what I've grasped within the four, uh, 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 my own mind, Yisrael, Yah. I want to read something here in a minute. Give me a moment. Well, Yah wants us to know everything. No, he doesn't. There are things that he has hidden. Yes. There are things that he has sealed up. I want to read that quickly. All right. Now, if Yah seals something up, if he seals something in us, is it meant for it to go out? Let me show an example here quickly. In the book of uh, Isaiah, Yeshaya. Isaiah, Isaiah, <clears throat> Isaiah. Chapter 8, verse 16. Verse 15 and 16. And it speaks of the great power that shall, that shall come to revelation, the Galah, the expulsion, Galah of Joshua. It says here in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 15, Yeshua. And many among them shall stumble. Who is he talking about? Yisrael. He's talking about the nation of his people. He said, many shall stumble and they shall not fall. They shall fall. They shall fall down. They shall fall away. That's what it says. That's what the Torah says. In these days, many shall fall away and shall not be renewed again. They shall fall and they shall be broken. And they shall be, as our auction read brought out, they shall be snared and they shall be taken. So when you snare something, do you intend to take it? You set a trap to snare them, right? But look at the word to us, Yisrael. He tells us to bind up, to bind it. What? The edah, the testimony. And then he gives us a profound statement here. He said, I want you to hata. I want you to seal. Seal. Let it be in a fix. Seal on it. Yeshua is the fix. Seal. Well, the Torah, he said, I want you to seal it. Seal what? He says, seal the Torah, the law, among my Talmudim. Now, if something is sealed of that, does he intend for that to, uh, to, to come out of us, to flow out? He says, I want you to, hata, to seal it, to affix a seal. Put one of those big old master locks whereby you, your shoe is the master lock, is it? He is the master lock. Whereby nothing can come in and go. You can beat on it all day and it doesn't come out. There's knowledge that he has sealed up. There are things, there are truths, there's re there are revelations. Yoshua said, I have many things that I would love to tell you and open up to you. He said, but you're not ready now. You can't even bear them. You can't. That's why you must be nurtured and brought up and reared. So when Yah speaks a message by the messenger, you won't fight against it. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, let me, let me direct your attention here then. Hallelujah. Where is that? In the book of uh, Daniel, Yah. I want to read this quickly. Here. Ah, yes. In the book of Daniel, Yah, chapter 12, verse 4. It says in the book of Daniel, Yah. Daniel, Daniel, Yah. Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. Yah says, but... You, O Daniel, Daniel, 
He says, I want you to shut. I want you to so dumb. I want you to shut up. Shut up what, yeah? He says the words, the dabarim, the promises, the word. Uh, and he says, I want you to have time to seal them or to seal the sefer, to seal the book. This book is sealed. This book is sealed, Yisrael. He said, I want you to seal the book uh, even to the time of the Akarita. He uses the word kates, the time, the dimension of the Akarita, the last hours of the last day of the last time. Hallelujah. Only then shall be revealed. There are things that you never intended for our minds to reach me, yonder. This nuclear death uh, and the power to burn your babies, uh, the power to try to destroy the earth. Uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Gilead, uh, chapter 14, yes, I'm going to destroy all them that destroy the earth. He's going to destroy them. Uh, he's going to destroy the nations. Yeah. They've destroyed the earth. They've destroyed the, the aqua fresh, the water. He hid the waters under the earth, uh, and these beasts of hell have gone down. Uh, uh, this well here that we give, uh, Rory told us, Mr. Rory said, give 125, 200 gallons a minute. And now they are saying that this well that we can't drink the water because uh, it has, uh, what is that, some kind of, uh, uh, help me. Uh, he said we can, they said we can use the water for for our plants and all that. And I quizzed them that day I went down to see them. I questioned them uh, and debated them. I did not want to do it in a way that they, would, uh, that they would try to exact pressure on us. You have to agree with your adversary while you're in his way. You know, understand? But that's all right. We had a remedy. You understand? But, the, the, you know, they say, well, there's so many, just like I was saying to us, the rungent or the, uh, the, uh, or the, uh, the, the way to uh, measure rungents or the, the amount of, 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 uh, of this, uh, this nuclear fallout waste that penetrates one's body, you can only take so much a year, five rungents a year. Over that, your body just began to break down and, and this, it rots inside and it just destroys you. It's a death. It's a cancerous death. What mind thinks of that? What mind thinks and sits up at night to the mathematical formula, just like the man, that, the, that Jewish man, that German, he was a Jew, uh, that invented the bomb for Hiroshima and Nagasaki, he finally killed himself. Uh, he had to. He committed suicide. That's a demonic mind to come up. This mind that says, uh, I'm above you, yeah. I know how to kill. You know I know how to kill. Uh, I got stuff. You know I know the formula. Oh, you can fly, but I'll make men fly. I'll have them to lift up on the wings of the heavens. Uh, and planes that are beyond the ability to comprehend uh, its power to fly. And they get up. Yeah. Structures that are beyond the ability to contain or understand even the, the dynamics of the mechanics, the engineering, and the mathematical power. You will be surprised. He's and that's a fact. Yes, yeah, says leave those things alone. Now, I, I did that to show you there are things that are sealed. He says, seal up this testimony in our bosom, in our hearts, this law of Yah, that we seal this up against the day of death, of vengeance of Yah. We must. The enemy, his mind says, you got fire, I got fire. You want to fight with fire? I'll fight you because I know you're fire. So I'm going to fight you with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more here in the book of Gilead. Hallelujah. No, let me finish this. Daniel 12.4. Yeah, but you all, Daniel, uh, shut up. I want you to shut them up the, 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 read the word and seal. I want you to hot them, uh, fix a seal, the book, the sefer, even to the time of the end. Hear this. Many shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall increase. Shaul says they are forever learning, but never able to come to the da'at, the knowledge of truth, what is truth. Ya Sodik, the Helium 119 in verse 142. His truth or Ya's character is an everlasting righteousness. Olam viad, it doesn't cease, it is the same. He says, and your Torah is the truth. 
That is truth. And men shall go, he says here, uh, and knowledge shall increase, but they shall never be able to come or exact the knowledge of truth. Uh, they don't understand the dynamics of this nuclear power and this fission and this fusion of the atom, what it does, uh, and what it does on the psyche and the physiological state uh, of a man. But what a demonic mind that wants to burn and kill and to destroy a perfect place, what Yah has created uh, out of his mind, out of his dabarim, uh, out of his conscious uh, and he brought forth an excellent fitting thing he called man uh, and he gave man a help meet uh, one that was beautiful and erected uh, in the power of your truth uh, until sin finds uh, its way into one's damn mind uh, and when sin finds its way in uh, we will do every kind of damn wicked thing uh, and exalt our minds against the mind of Yah and lift ourselves and say who sees me Nobody sees me, you lying Jezebel. Yah sees you. You faggot thing of a man. And that's what we do, Yisraya. Oh, it's just a little lie. Every lie is a lie. No damn thing is a little white lie. I was growing up, you could tell a little white lie, but a black lie, you're going to hell. Oh, it's the truth. We got to deal with the facts of what is fact. You look at the nations that can burn your babies to hell. You can call it what you want to. It is the Russia. It is the countries. I don't know something back here because I want to find out the population of Russia. Who knows what the population of the whole Russia empire is? It's only 143 million people. They're less than 2% of the population of the world, but they own 11,000 nuclear bombs. It sounds like to me you are cowards. You're a bunch of faggot cowards. Your leadership. Less than 2% of the population of the world. That's what Russia, they own more. Here in America, we all know that America just a few years ago just passed 315 million people. There are about 316 million people. 316 million people in the, in the nearly on census records of nearly 7 billion people, so people on the earth, and peoples as well. There is a people, what we call human, and there are peoples, what we call na nations and nationalities. And yet this nation, the 350 million, you're talking about around 4.2, 3, 4% of all the population. You're talking about less than, uh, less than 60% of the world uh, between those two nations just in the weapons. Uh, they own uh, nearly 20,000 nuclear bombs that would twist your babies and kill them dead. Yeah. And the only nation that comes close to them is China. And they have only about 300 or 800 uh, nuclear bombs. Uh, and they have a population of about 1.4 billion people, nearly 20% of the world's population. And these are the nations we see in the black that owns uh, the, the power to destroy. And the land they call Israel, uh, there they have 200 nuclear bombs. Uh, and, and it's only, come on again, you, you know how many people that are they're in that land of what they call Israel? It's less than 8 million people. Less than 0.06% of the whole population. And yet they control the whole Middle East. Because they know they will burn the hell out of the people there. They know that. Well, God is on their side. You're right, God is on their side. I know God is on their side. I know these are the children of God. I know these are the children of God. I know these are the children of God. The powers of hell arose against uh, Adam, uh, against the power to help him meet the expectation of Yah. The words of day you defy Yah, you will become a God. Known the difference between Tav and, and Ra. And that's what a God is. I establish my own justice of what's right. I am a God. I am a God. That's what a God is. I am a God. I know what is right. It's right to be a faggot here, isn't it? You can marry another man, marry another man. Oh, just damn beast. You don't see no lions out there marrying lions. You may see two big males rubbing each other's head. And there's only one purpose they do that. 
They rob each other's head because uh, it is an allegiance and alliance. They get each other's body sent on them. Uh, to, 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 then when they smell one another, they smell each other. They know that you're my boy. That's why they rob each other. You see big lions, man. They're always robbing each other. When they're a pride. You see, we, we stand pride, boy. If one go down, we both go down. And this is the mind to burn the people and to kill them, to destroy the people. Let, let me show you the other nation. They are in the, in the UK. They have, uh, they have 225 nuclear armament bombs. Um, and UK, let me see. Let me get it right. London has 225 uh, bombs. 225. There's a small island there, peninsula. They have about 150 million people, less than 1% of the world population. But these are the powers that know how to burn you up and kill you. Yeah. And the only nation in there with anything that is, it, it is Pakistan. And Pakistan uh, has about 200 million people. And everything else is it's not even in value. But these are the nations here. These nations, that nation and that nation, America, they got bombs here on Alaska for here. And they got bombs here that can drop right down. See, because Alaska, I know it looks like that, but that's not how the world is shaped. This country right here, Russia, is near here. And this is near here. So they got bombs around their peninsula, around this big peninsula, to drop bombs on your baby. And they're all for big cities like New York. And guess what? South Carolina, it is one of the most, it is one, it is one of the states that store more nuclear waste in any state. And they wonder why we got such groundwater waste and all of that. It's not going to stop it. They can build all the sarcophagus they wanted. They built a sarcophagus over that in, uh, uh, there in Pripyat. And the nuclear material is still there. They say it would take 100,000 year, 100, years before they even is out. And I say to myself, how do these damn fools know that? So arrogant, so full of pride. They're so grandizing in their arrogance. And then they got these little hippie-looking cats and women walking around looking like fools. Uh, they're running around, running around everywhere. We got to stop this and that. You think those fruitcakes going to stop them? There's only one going to stop them. That's Yah. He's going to bring those songs they were singing. Devil, your kingdom is coming down. Oh, as it is. You have been building oh, your kingdom all over the land. Oh, devil, your kingdom oh, is coming down. Oh, it's coming down. I know they didn't sing it like that. I don't want you to get happy with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are things that God doesn't intend for us to pry into. So, no. It doesn't benefit us as a nation. It doesn't benefit you to understand the very psychological tenets of a serial killer. Why do you need to understand that? No, you just stand in the gate that the bastard, you don't come here. Get out, boy. I know you're a coward. Don't come in here. I don't need to understand the tenets of a serial kill killer. A pedophile. Don't even come close to me, you freak out of hell. Don't touch our babies. We will cause my vie to come upon you. Don't worry about what it means. I know what it means. Yas, you simply die prematurely before your time. That's all that means. Hallelujah. And I mean that. He say, hide it, seal it up until the time that it shall be known. Uh, Revelation chapter 10. Quickly. I don't want to know everything. Neither should you want to know everything. We should not want to know everything, Yisrael. Yeah. Revelation chapter 10. Quickly, verse 4. It says, and when the seven thunders uh, had uttered their call, their voice, uh, Yokoharan said, I was about to have that. I was about to inscribe this in the Sefer in the book, Revelation 10, 12. And I heard the voice of Yah from Hashem, I am, sing unto me, sing up. 
He said, sell them up. He said, hop down, sell it. Fix it so it doesn't go out. That's why we have the Ruach HaKodesh. That the love of Torah does not uh, seep out of us. He says, seal up. Seal up those things with the seventh on the Zadar. And write them not. Why do you think they don't want every nation to have the ability to create nuclear bombs? Because they know you cannot control them. Once you build one, you can't dismantle it. Yah says, Yakahan. I can imagine his state of mind, what he heard. Zachin, Yah Rabbi has been teaching us the voice of Yah. He thunders that the earthquake, the mountains are removed. The great strong men of Lebanon, the great tribes of pride, they fall at the voice of Yah. Yeah. The earth bow. And he said, seal it up. When the perfect Torah of Yah, that's what the seven, it is complete then. He says, seal it up. He said, only those that shall stand, those messengers uh, that I shall raise up shall understand those things. He didn't give that to Benny Hinn or T.D. the snake hog dog. It is right. He says, seal it up. There are things that Yah has sealed in the heavens he doesn't intend for us to know. He doesn't intend for us to know, Yisraya. Because it caused agony and vexation. I want to know the things that pertain to life and having that life more abundantly. I want to know the things that are the construct of life. I don't give a damn about the rest of it. I don't care. It means nothing, Yisraya. Teach me the things of life is high. That cause breath and the substance of his testimony to flow through, through me continuously. Yes. That it may cause me to be high yield of great strength. Of the military might and the power of Almighty Yah. Yeah. And saying to one the other day, I says the difference between a Beth Ula virgin and a woman that is a virtuous woman. She's a woman that is high yield. She's a woman of great strength. She has maturated. She has matured into the beautiful flower of even the lily of the field. Even Shulamu in all of his beauty. It is all of his yefa. He did not, his yefefa. He did not array as though one of the little lily in the field. She has climaxed to a state of mind uh, where when her mind is open her voice, uh, it brings forth the delicacies of strength and life uh, and purpose to whomever she speaks to. Uh, a young Beth, uh, 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 Beth Ula, a young virgin, uh, she has no concept of the power of life. But a woman of Haya, she's a woman of strength. She's a woman that has the military, the milchaya, the military might of the power of Torah. Why? Because she has submitted herself unto her head, her authority, the might of the one that she should serve as she's serving all Maria. Hallelujah. You know, I tell my ish all the time, I say, you will have no problem with me. I don't ask you to do much. When I do, I want you to do it. Hallelujah. I say, you will have my love, my undivided attention. But when you arouse me, woman, when you don't, you're in trouble. Do I have you doing that many things? Talk to me, woman. And so when I ask you to do something, don't give me no reason. You have no problem with me. You will never have no problem with me. You hear my voice raise? Just do what I ask you. It will leave nothing for me to love you. But when you don't, you caused me to rise up, woman. That's a fact. Ah, uh, you hypocrites. There's nothing like the beauty of man. And I'm not talking about a $500 suit and some $800 gated shoes, all right. You do that, woman, you have no problem with me. Just answer me. I don't ask you that many questions. I don't take up too much of your time. Just do what I say. I'll do what you tell me. You ask me to do it, I'll do it. You don't have to worry about getting the wood and I get the wood. You know, I take the garbage out of you. Just tell me. But don't mess up. Don't talk smart to me. And don't try to elevate yourself. You're in trouble with me. You are in royal trouble with me. You stay in that place, you will, you will come on, I will eat out of your hands. 
Anything beyond that, you're in trouble. That's right. Don't get huffy with me. Don't, get to, don't raise your voice at me. Period. I'm not buying that. I'm not afraid to say. You, you, you say you're talking about men that they, they want to have this pretense that they are so proper. And nothing but a damn pack of liars. I'm real. Every marriage goes through the same thing. Silly man. Silly woman. You're so silly. You're, someone sent me an email and said, I love you, preacher. Come on. I know you got to say something. Hmm. Hallelujah. One more verse here in Revelation chapter 20. Seal it up. He's hiding it from everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 20, where is that? Now, to understand the seal of Yah or his khatam, when it's sealed, this is just to give you an affirmation that when once Yah seals it, it's sealed. It says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 3, and, it came, and, and he, he and cast him, he's talking about Hashatan, Shatan, and his allegiance of heart, darkness, his trinity, like the Christians teach. He cast him into the bottomless pit and he shut him up. And he set a seal upon him. Did he set a seal? That there is no spiritual power of him to manipulate and, and to roam, going to and fro, seeking he whom he may devour. He set a seal upon him that he should not deceive. Does it say nations or nations? It says the gleam, the nations, uh, no more, till the thousand years shall be fulfilled, uh, and after that must he be loose for a little season. He didn't tell you how long the season, he said a little season, for a day for the yam, for the moat. When Yah seals it up, when he says seal it up, he means seal it up. There are things that he is sealed in the heavens. You can say all you want to, how the clouds come about. Uh, all you know is what you see in the scientific formula of what clouds are. And yet they cannot explain the most distant star or the closest star. And yet all we have is what science, which is stupid, uh, what science dictates and predicts unto us. Uh, and we think these are smart men. Look at these men. I, I, I look at things like that. When I say that, I look at men. I look at their, uh, I look at their characteristics. I look at their, uh, their speech and what they say. I say, you know, people buy that. That's so stupid. They don't even know what they're talking about. Every star has a name. And the arrogance of man said, we're going to name him after Professor, uh, Professor John Hopkins. That star is called J. Hopkins. How in the hell did he get that name? Huh? How long? You, you tell me that's John Hopkins? That's this arrogant. You can have a star registered in the book of registry with your name of your love. Oh, oh there go a uh, G.D. Bell star. Where there it is. Of course, the bees sell the same star to everybody. They made millions of dollars that way. We're a stupid generation. What makes scientific matter so true? These men have delved into the mind. They have the mind of Hashotan. He knows the power of aerodynamics. He does. He does. He knows them. How many nations do you think build airplanes? UK, Air Fran France, America, Russia. Basically, that, that's it. China just got into the market. Not many nations that build airplanes. They buy the planes from other nations. Boeing. And what's the one in UK? The Boeing and uh, uh, even American buy planes from them. What is that one in UK? I can't think of it. Not how many people build, how many nations build cars? America, nobody buy a Russian car. Japan, Japan is just, look what a little collection about what, about three, 4,000 islands? Huh? Less than 150 million people. And nearly all their population live in six cities. It's nothing but a volcanic eruption. That's all it is. That's all Japan is, just, just volcanic eruption, just that. Most of the people live in six cities, the vast population. And that's just the truth, Yisrael. Hallelujah. 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 
I want to read this and I want to read a few things for us. Uh, I, I was hoping I'd complete this today, but I see I'm not going to do this. The enemy must always try to duplicate Yah. He shall cause fire to come down by the words of his mouth. Yah got it all in control. We must understand that. But this is our instruction and this is our assurance of security in Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. Jeremiah. Yah says here, Jeremiah 23, 29. He says, is not my jaba, my word, is not my word like as an ish, is not the word of Yah like a fire? Yeah. Who and what is his word? He is, and the word was made flesh. The fire of his Torah was made, and we beheld the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, not my word like fire, says Yah, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Is not his word like a hammer that breaks the stony heart into pieces and causes us to have a heart of flesh? It's not his word like fire that it consumes. His word uh, is a power of uh, energetic ignition of a fire. When Yah speaks, it burns. It, it causes uh, cause kingdoms to come down. And that is what this beast of hell uh, is trying to project to the nations. Uh, and so it calls to people, what are the Ruachim of Yah? Is the Ruach of Yah Re, the, Yurach, uh, the spirit of fear? And so it's trying to captivate the nations by fear. You're not running up in here in America because she will burn you. She will burn you, your babies. Let me read this quickly. I want to stop there. I want to just show you something. Hallelujah. I want to read this article. Yeah, all right. It says, I write war anniversary. This nation celebrates everything. It celebrates killing people. So it's an anniversary. I thought anniversaries, if anything, was this jovial occasion that is so beautiful and pacific. It says, I write war anniversary, birth defect, and cancer rate at devastating high in Basra and Fallujah. Cancer, death rate, the babies, born with two heads, one eye, cyclone births. And I want to show you what nuclear material does. I'm not going to finish it, David. I'll get back. But this is what it says. It's sad. It is sad. And Yah's going to bring this nation down to hell. It says, 10 years at the start of the U.S. invasion in Iraq, doctors in some of the Middle Eastern nation city are witnessing an abnormally high rate case of cancer and birth defect. The rise is tied to the use. Listen. See, all of this uranium and phosphate, phosphorus, what they do when they test military equipment of nuclear bombs, all of the residue of that, they put that in bullets and weapons. That's how dirty these beasts are. I had, I've said this to you all before, when I was in the military in the 70s, Andre McCarroll, haven't seen him in many, many years, he was in a chemical warfare unit. He was stationed in Newingsburg, Germany. I was in Stuttgart. That this was a wicked man, is he was just as wicked as I was. No matter of fact, I was more wicked than him. He could not even consciously stay in the military because he said, I can't be a part of that. He said, we got stuff. When he began to tell me, he said, we got stuff. I'm telling you, homeboy. They infest mosquitoes and just drive and let them out. And as soon as they bite you, you it's, it's called a dry drowning. Your lungs began to develop blisters at the water and it just bursts in your lungs and you drown. Drown on dry ground. You tell me, y'all wants a man to go beyond the law of life and to kill someone in such a grueling fashion, that has to be one of the most grueling deaths it is to drown. 
I mean, I'd rather take a bullet to the head if I got to go one way. Just go, go ahead. Ah! But the drone is an agonizing death. And you literally, he said, he said, I'm telling you, man. He said, I'm telling you, I was there. He got out. He said, it's sadistic, it's devilish. He said, I can't be a part of that. He said, I can't. Knowing what we do, I cannot participate in it. He had made rank. He was a soldier. He was moving up the, the ladder. But he couldn't handle that. Getting back to the article. It says that this high rate case of cancer and birth defects, the rise is tied to the use of depleted uranium and white phosphorus in military assaults. They dropped grenades and launches on the people. They could not beat that nation in a primitive fashion of hand-to-hand -hand combat through a guerrilla-type warfare like in Nam. So they dropped Agent Orange and they foolish the land. And people today, you don't hear anything about Nam. All you hear about is Pol Pot. What well, they were established by this government of America. When the, when the Vietnamese kicked the hell out of France, then America comes in to her aid. Right. And these are the countries with weapons like that. And the land is so defaulted that most of the population, about 75% of the population, is under 35, 30 years of age. That's young. They kill the people, they kill the mothers, and they kill the old people. For a nation has no zakin, no ones that are anxious to understand the history of things and show you the, and show you the error of your ways. That's why zakin is so valuable. Not to be a damn clown and to be a jokester. But a zakin is one that has the gift of the knowledge, the wisdom and judgment of Almighty Yah. And when they come into a place, everyone knows that that's a zakin, not a damn jokester or jive turkey. Not some damn demented, twisted looking man uh, that has no cognate value of whom he is, uh, or some woman that's as nut as a fruitcake. Uh. When they come in, they cause the place to shine. You know, there's something about what they call the royal throne of Britain. I just found this out some days ago. That that whore calls herself Queen, uh, what, Queen Elizabeth. There's two things about her protocol. First of all, she never greets anyone. She doesn't say, oh, how, hi, how are you? Oh, Raphael, she never greets anyone. And there's never a separating or departure you have an excellent day. You tell me that's not a beast. That is not even what you call humanistic ways. She never greets anyone. She meets Mr. Obama. She, Mr. Obama, well, of course, America, you don't have to bow to the dirty whore. You'd be surprised what's in the wall. Yeah, I'm talking about Britain. You'd be surprised what's in the walls of that nasty whorehouse. She never greets anyone. And folks stand out there, just wave at that dirty whore. They say, look at this miserable trash. Let me read the article quickly. I want to close it at a point. It said, because of the white uranium and this, this phosphorus and the military assaults, on the war's 10-year anniversary, democracy, now that's what they said, but there's no democracy, spoke was the Khajamil and Al Jazeera, uh, Al Jazeera reporter, who recently returned from Iraq, Jamil recounts meeting Dr. Samaria Alina, a doctor in the city of Fallujah, focusing on the issues of birth defects. So many birth defects. You all are blessed that your babies are not born with defects. And it is such. A pandemic, it's not an epidemic, but it's a pandemic. Someone is going to pay. I don't care how wicked, they're no more wicked than America. Yeah. They didn't know, I don't care if they serve Allah, your damn Jesus, your God is no different. Yeah. Your Jewish deity is no damn different. Yeah. They're no more wicked than you. At least they have decency to have community and they will congregate with each other. 
Hey, you damn Christians don't even do that. She said, it's common now in Fallujah for newborns, to, for newborns to come out with massive, multiple, systematic defects, immune problems, massive central nervous system problem, massive heart problem, skeletal disorder. You hear that? The little bones cannot support the flesh. Nervous system, the little babies just strip. That's a sadistic lie. You, you tell me Yah wants us to go beyond his law to Babies being born, babies being born with two heads. Babies being born with their internal organs outside of their bodies. Cyclone, cyclone, babies with one big eye. And a ba cyclone babies, literally one eye. Really, really, really. This is how she explained it. She says, it's horrific. It's horrifying. He says, so, she says, so horrific nightmarish type of birth defects. It's not something with a child with a little leg longer, but it is just the organs born outside. Come on. That's not that. Come on, man. That's not even the, that's not even the nature of a, even a human. And you tell me this country says great. It's a coward, yeah. faggot country. That's why they're doing everything to support faggots. Yummy yeah. in soul. That the current rate of birth defects from the city of Fallujah, listen now. The rate of the birth defects and the agonizing diseases and death. That the rate of the birth defects man, from the city of Fallujah has surpassed, surpassed, surpassed those of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After the nuclear attack at the end of World War II. Echoing Jamal's finding, a September 12th study published in the Bulletin Environmental uh, Contamination and Toxicology that focused on uh, maternity wards and hospitals in the city of Basra and Fallujah recorded a devastating number of birth defects in the past decade. The study also indicate that children or childlike leukemia and other types of cancers are on the rise. Between October 1994 and October 95, the number of birth defects per 1,000 live in El Basra Maternity Hospital was 1.37. In 2003, the number of birth defects in El Basra Maternity Hospital was 23%. That's insane, man. Live birth. Within less than a decade, the occurrence of congenital birth defects increased by an astounding 17-fold. In the same hospital. As David Kerner notes in the foreign policy, the number of miscarriages and birth defects are much higher than before the start of the war, and also widely out of proportion to number collectively the rest of the world. So in those two cities, Fallujah and Basra, if we equate that on the world scale, the birth defects and the type of defects, there's no one in the world whereby even, uh, even the comparative percentage-wise that even the whole world, that even this percentage in those two little cities, it is far greater than the percentage of the whole world collective together. You tell me that's the mind of y'all? No. You tell me you're going to be able, when they drop, you're going to be able to go out and buy bread and eat that, and, and you think you're going to just live off the land? You, you're wrong. We're going to have to live off the truth of y'all. Right. We're going to have to live off the Torah. Every word of y'all is pure. Therefore, his servants, they love it. They trust y'all. Hallelujah. It says, uh, uh, it says this Matzgang Savabin Afanhana, one of the lead authors of the 2012 study of the toxicology at the University of Michigan, told the independents in 2012 that there is a compelling evidence to connect the growing number of defects of birth with the military assault in Basra and Fallujah. Fallujah. 
And the new op-ed of Al Jazeera, Salvabin Asfahana, writes that the cancer and birth defect academic, epidemic uh, constitute an extraordinary public health emergency in Iraq, and the large-scale testing of the environment is affecting the cities uh, is of utmost urgency. That this is just a simple effect. I'm not there's. I want you to read this next week. I don't want you to be tired in your mind. And there's another aspect of this. But this is what that this deluded mind of man says that this is all right to understand this. Because uh, what a man's mind goes beyond the very nature of Yah's Torah or the very order of Yah's Torah. It is a mind that is open to every kind of sadistic concept there is. How do I know that? Because it is that same man of Hashatan says to Yah, No, I'm going to exalt myself above you. I'm greater than you. You need me. Yah says, No, no, you need me. But I do need you. He needs the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He goes about and do just what Yah commands and instructs him to do. That's what he does. And he does it quite well too. He does it with faithfulness. He said, I'll kill them all if you let me. Yah says, nah. That's why he doesn't change. Therefore, the sons of Yisrael, of Yaakov, we are not consumed. He's a consuming fire, is he not? That's why we are not consumed. Listen here in Gibarim, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 25. Gibarim. For Yah, your power, he is a achal. He is a consuming fire. Even... He is Khana, he is a jealous Abba. He doesn't want anything to touch us. He doesn't want us touching any other husband man. He doesn't want us touching gods and, and, and integrating ourselves with gods. So he doesn't want that. He's going to answer by fire. I want to close with this dissertation here, with this truth here. I got in the book of Shurach. Write it down and read it. He's talking to the northern kingdom of or Israel here in Sharat 48.1. Hear this, please. If you hear nothing I've said today, hear this. Yah says in Sharat 48.1. Concerning the Nobi Ilaya and Elishia. Sharat 48.1. Then the Nobi Ilaya arose like a fire, an ish. And his daba, his words, they burn like a torch lamp. They burn like the near, the fire of Yastura. He brought a famine upon them, the kingdoms. And by his zest, his zeal for Yah, he made them few in number. By the word of Almighty Yahweh, he shut up the heavens. And also three times uh, he brought down fire. Yes, you he did. For the fire of Yah is going to rain. Yes. How splendid. How splendid you were, Eliah, in your wondrous deeds. And who has the right to boast which you have? Who can talk like you, Eliah? Your deeds are splendid and excellent. They're beyond the perception, conception, the superlative accolades of man to express. Who did raise up a dead man from death? And his nephesh from the place of the dead? How? By the daba, the word of the Mosad. Who brought kings down to destruction? This is what the mighty messenger of Yah does and can do. He brought kings down to destructions and famous men by their beds who heard the rebuke of Yah in Sania, the judgment and vengeance at Chorab, who anointed kings to take revenge, revenge and prophets to succeed after him. You who were taken by a whirlwind of fire, did he bring him up by a whirlwind of fire? He's going to come down uh, and he's going to revive his nation by the same wind of fire, by his Ruach Yisrael. 
in a chariot with horses of fire who was, uh, who was ordained at the appointed time. He was there for, at that specific time. Uh, it is written to calm the wrath of Yah before it breaks out into fury. He was there to say, Yah, you can't bring him down just like Moshe said. said. He, was a ra, he was a reach of Yah. He was a friend. He was there to calm the Ebra of Yah uh, at that time. What fury for what? To turn the heart of the father to the son and to restore the Shebat, the tribes, the house of Yahob, of Yisrael. Barach, bless are those who saw you and those who have been adorned in love. For we also shall surely live. We have seen the great hands of Yah, the work of Yah in this mighty messenger that he calls the fire to come down. This is the mindset of HaShatan. He shall revive, he shall cleanse us, uh, he shall purge his nation by the words of his mouth by fire. And we're going to see the literal dynamics of this most class, ca uh, cas, uh, 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 catastrophic event that shall take place. Uh, and the enemy is prepping the minds of the world, of the leaders, uh, of the nations that are, are full of geruth, are full of their dung, full of their gaba, full of their pride. And he's going to cause them to be brought down. And throw down to hell. I want to close with one last reading and explain this a little. Hallelujah. That you may understand why Hashatan, even in the book of Gilead, and why he's going to use fire. And if there's one that could give us some kind of understanding of that, is Shalomo Solomon, the wisest of all men, no man that had the plethora of knowledge he had. And he speaks in the book of wisdom and the wisdom of Shalomo. In the book of wisdom, please hear this, write it down. You have what they call the missing book. I don't like that Greek word, apocrypha. Uh, they are the hidden books, sefa of Yah. I don't like that expression. I don't like nothing Greekish. But I will use something Greekish on Wednesday to show us to bring a point home to us. It says here in the last reading of this book, in the book of wisdom 13.1, I want to read. It says here, anyone has that, anyone has the Apocrypha, Wisdom 13.1? Do you all have Wisdom 13.1? Does it say that some men were ignorant of Yah or all men? It says, for all men, all men, all men were ignorant of Yah, were foolish by nature, and they were unable and they were unable, listen, from the tough things of the beautiful thing. Just to look up in the heavens, that's so beautiful. For me, it is. I'm out here sometimes in the morning. It's nothing but the cold, brisky air. But, uh, but the heavens are so beautiful for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wisdom 13 and 1. For all men were ignorant of Yah, were foolish by nature. And they were unable from the excellent, beautiful things of Yah that are seen uh, to know him who exists. Nor did they recognize the craftsman while paying heed to his work. They look at the beauty of a tree and they don't say, some, no, that did not happen by some uh, evolution or amoeba. That is great. The form is just too different from every tree. Uh, you got oak, you got different oaks, you got pines, uh, you got all kind of fir trees, it's too different. You got the acacia, you got the teak tree. No, no, no. How did that mutate onto that? Stupid beasts. Uh, they cannot identify the craftsman because they didn't look at the beauty of that. Uh, he says, but they suppose, uh, that's how we think, uh, that either fire, he's going to cause fire to come down, Hashatan in Gilead. Does it say that? Uh, sure does. Uh, by fire or wind or, or swift air or the circle of the stars uh, or turbulent water or luminaries of the heavens uh, were the gods. That's who they ascribe to the gods. They call Barnabas and Shaul, Jupiter and Mars. So they have ascribed that. So they look to the heavens now. They're looking for their gods. So they prescribed to them gods uh, that rule the world. So Shalomo's wisdom says, If through delight in the beauty of these things, men assume them to be their gods. Just seeing the beauty of a star, you call that a god. And it just sits there. There's nothing there. 
He said, let them know how much better than these is their Abba, their creator, Almighty Yah. If you see the excellence of a star, you should know that Yah is greater than that. You should know that the one, the, 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 the design of this didn't come from some kind of uh, things falling out of the heavens in place. Where, where did the heavens fall from? Just by looking at the beauty, when you see the beautiful flowers, I, I'm amazed at stuff like that. I look at flowers, my eyes just doesn't pick up the pigments when I was younger, but it's just so beautiful. I can see it, but I can't see it like I used to see it. But the colors are so brilliant. Consider the lily of the field. Shalom on all of his grandizing beauty. He did not array as just one of these. That's saying something. There's nothing more pretty than a lily. That's a pretty, it's a beautiful plant. And the life is short, isn't it? The buff doesn't live long. If to the delight of the beauty of these things, the stars and all the winds, uh, assuming them to be gods, uh, let them know how much better than these is their Yah, Omar Yahweh, for the authority of beauty, for the author of the beauty of them. Yah created the beauty of all things. He created the beauty of everything, every color, everything, He created it. And if man were amazed at their power and workings, let them perceive from them how much more powerful is he who formed them. Don't you know if he formed the air and the, and the pebbles of the sea? My, how many seas of the earth and how many same sand grains? And yet Yah knows them all by number. He knows, he doesn't need the measurement. It would take man a year just to count a, a, a certain amount of sand off the ocean. But Yah knows every number. He knows even the number of the hairs of our head. He knows everything. Hallelujah. If we know that him that formed the how much more. He said in verse 5. For from the greatness and beauty of created things. Comes the correspondent perception of the creator. For what we see. When we see the beauty of what Yah has done. I don't care if it's a piece of grass or leaf. Then we can see the beauty of whom he is. Yeah. We can see what he has done in his greatness, his power. Yet, Yah says, I want to tell you something. Listen now. Yet, these men are little to be blamed. You can't blame them, can you? Listen to Yah. We don't know him. L listen how this wisdom of Shilomo speaks. He says, uh, yet these men are little to be blamed for their ignorance. They don't know. They have no sense. For perhaps... They go astray while seeking Yah and desiring to find him. Although they're trying to seek Yah and they say, nah, the tree, we're going to worship a God. He said, you know, they can't be blamed. For as they live among his works, they keep searching. And they trust in what they see because the things that are seen are so beautiful. He said, you can't blame them yet again. Yet again, yeah. not even they, not one damn one, are to be excused. Yeah. Well, I got excused. No, no, Yah says, uh, 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 uh. not one, not one, even they are to be excused. For if they had power to know so much, then they could, that they could investigate the world, why? How did they fail to find sooner Yah of these things? If you got power to understand the nuclear bombs and all that, how to burn our babies, damn it, investigate him. Listen to the messenger. Listen to the Elijah, the spirit of Elijah. You don't have no damn excuse. Huh? You can try to find what all you want to. Well, I just didn't know why. You got time to investigate every kind of damn gossiping and every damn kind of lie. Investigate the Torah and you will know that Yah hates it. He said, damn it, not one of them is getting bound. Well, you can't blame him. Oh, y'all said, yeah, I can. For if you can. If you can look out there and see how beautiful that grass is and the rain and, and the cold and the warmth, then you could investigate the Torah to find out about him. And then when you find out about him, you would, you would cause some fear to come in you. So we're without excuse. He's going to save his house, Israel, y'all. May the riches of God rest upon you all. Yoshua's mighty name, may he strengthen Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Makes no difference whether you got something or not. If you listen, you will. You have ear to hear, let him hear what the Ruach says unto the assembly. And when you hear, you will have the ability to understand and obey. 
We greet you all again, our friends. May you bless you all. Send an offering, send an offering. Help this work. It's not used to promote some kind of funky lifestyle, but it's real. May the riches you rest me. Come on, Bazaar King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the mercy of Yahweh continue to shower and to pour out upon Israel, Yah, as we are, as we hear so many times, uh, walking in this walk of Imuna. And as Yahweh, he continue to give us what we need. He provides all we need when we need it. The message on today of wisdom, sound, that it teaches us, Yisrael Yah, to stand firm. Not to walk after the flesh, but after the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, that we may endure and overcome and conquer our flesh, our emotions. It's not the enemy. It's not Satan. Yahshua already has given us victory over that, and even over death, Yisrael. He has taught us how to deal with who? With ourselves. That we may walk in the will of Almighty Yahweh, and that we may bring an offering that is fit and that is acceptable in his sight, in his presence. Hallelujah. We do brought Yahweh for a Shabbat. And for all you that are listening by via of live stream, let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And let us shoot, let us turn unto uh, Jerusalem, the city that has, been made, has not been made by man's hands, but by the hands of Almighty Yahweh. Almighty Yahweh, we do total you for all things, for your mercy, for your truth, and for your Ahava. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, that your Ruach will continue to rest upon Yisrael, Yah, and that you will pour out your Ruach, Yah, the former and the latter rain, that we may be uh, revived, yes, Almighty Yahweh, and strengthened. And even the dry places, Abba Yahweh, they will be made fat and be made strong. And all things we do, Barak, you go with them that have come by, from near and far. And all those that are scattered throughout the Olam, Abba Yahweh, you know who they are. You know us and have known us from the beginning of all things. Keep us, Abba Yahweh, by your Torah and by your word. And all things we give you, Toda, in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do cry. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yabarak you call Yisrael. Hallelujah.